Great drawing. Hmm, how should I explain this? Hmm. Oh yeah, Homer Simpson worksheet. All right, this worksheet says that you're going to use the freehand drawing technique to try to draw Homer Simpson as accurately as, you, as possible. Where do I begin? This is going to be kind of difficult. Uh, I'm going to try to start with the top of the head here, get that curve down. Uh, the way I'm going about this is I'm actually scanning the image to the left, and then I'm recording the, the information that I scanned with my eyeballs onto the paper on the, or the, the rectangle on the right. My eyes are constantly moving back and forth between the little tiny Homer Simpson reference image and what I am drawing. I have sped this video up so that I am not wasting your time today. As soon as this bad boy is finished here with his chest and collar and shoulder, add a little detail here for the hair. Not bad, not bad, not a bad Homer Simpson. I'm going to go ahead and uh, fast forward a little bit more so I can clean my lines up here. So I can have somewhat of a nice, clean, free-handed drawing of the Father Simpson. I wish I could draw this fast in real life. So, in uh, looking at freehand drawing, some things that um, are difficult about that process. Well, the first thing I comes to mind is that it's it's hard to uh, maintain or keep the proportions of the drawing. I feel like my Homer Simpson looks like he's been a little stretched out, so the proportions are a little bit off. Uh, another thing in looking at this that's that's difficult is um, I'm not sure uh, of the accuracy of Homer Simpson here. Uh, his nose looks a little too small. His eyes look a little too bubbly. Uh, you know, it's just kind of it's kind of difficult to check the accuracy from a freehand drawing. And another thing that's kind of hard is the, the shapes. I don't think that the shapes that I've drawn are very accurate. Um, and I can kind of show you a couple places here where I don't feel that I've succeeded. If I look at his beard shape, that doesn't really mimic or match that reference image too well. And looking at the nose, I think I've had the nose extended too far out. If I draw a line straight up from the tip of his nose on the reference image, it goes to the right of his pupil, not through his pupil, so that's not accurate. His nose needs to be pushed back. So this is difficult. Moving on to grid drawing. Okay, you're going to accurately draw Homer Simpson using the grid enlargement technique. Draw all lines that are in each square. You can subdivide your squares and you can mark the halfway points to ensure accuracy. And I'm going to show you what those two techniques are here. The first thing that you might want to do to kind of help keep pace keep organized is to label your grids. So the reference image, I'm putting letters down the left side and we're going to put numbers across the top. I'm going to do the same thing to my larger grid. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, one, two, three, and a four. Um, if I'm looking at this square here, that's square B3. Square B3 lines up on my large grid. So whatever's in B3, I want to draw there. All right, that's how the grid process works. I'm going to zoom in here so that you can see what I'm doing. And I'm looking at square B1, and there's that Homer's forehead. And as I'm drawing this line, I'm trying to relate it to the outside edges of the grid lines. And I don't know that that's accurate, what I just drew there. So I'm going to do what's called mark the halves. I'm simply putting a little dash halfway on each side of the grid square. Okay, whatever I do to my drawing, I have to do to my reference image as well. So I'm marking the halfway marks in my reference image. Now, when I look at that forehead, I can tell that it starts a little bit above halfway on the left side, and it ends a little bit before halfway on the bottom there. So that's the kind of conversation that you need to have to, with yourself when you're going through this drawing process. 
If I move down to C1, I'm going to start with that little forehead nubby and part of his eyeball here. Again, I don't know if, I'm, if, if this is accurate or not. I'm just trying to compare it to the outside edges of the grid square. So this time, I'm going to do what's called subdividing. I'm going to go ahead and actually draw a line straight through halfway vertically and straight through halfway horizontally. So in a sense, I've made smaller grid squares. What I do to my large grid, I have to do to my small grid. So I'm subdividing there. Now I'm shrinking the visual information. I can tell where that little forehead nub comes in and I'm relating it to the subdivided lines. The eyeball comes up, there's just a little bit of a sliver of the top part of the eye and then a little bit of a sliver of the left part of the eyeball. And the pupil looks like it's almost right where the subdivide intersects. Again, I'm going to move down to the next D1 and I'm going to subdivide. I feel like that's the best way uh, for me to maintain accuracy is to keep subdividing. And I can tell that the eyeball kind of comes down about there and the nose comes out and it's a little less than halfway to the left there. So again, if you have, keep having this conversation with yourself and relating the lines that you're drawing to the actual grid lines, you should be able to come up with a really accurate sort of representation or drawing of Homer Simpson. This should look a hundred times better than your free-handed version of Homer Simpson. And here's my finished version. Okay, That looks a lot more accurate than my freehand drawn version of Homer Simpson. And you can notice since I have larger grid squares, the image has enlarged. This is a nice process to use if you ever want to enlarge artwork. Again, subdividing. You can subdivide grid squares. I recommend doing that with the detail areas like the eyeballs. They're hard to get the, their shape down correctly. And another helpful technique is you can mark the halfway points. And that's kind of used for not so detailed areas. Grid drawing, baby. Good luck and go Butler.